Hello YouTubers. Welcome, my name's Dino. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a very simple dual battery system for your vehicle, and it's totally portable. I got this from Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. Now this is called the Battery Box Maxi. Now this is actually a bigger battery box than this one. So you put them the same length there, and it is a bit bigger. I noticed Kmart sell these, but they are a little bit smaller. Now, if you've got no idea about electrical and you want to do this, I suggest this is the one to buy for you. Everything is on it. So you got your, your on-off switch, you got your voltage readout, circuit breaker. You have two Anderson connectors. Now these will handle 30 amps. You have your 12 volt there and you have two USBs there. And that is it guys, that's as I got it out of the box. I did nothing to it, all I done was take the wrapping off it. You get one of these straps to strap it shut when you put your battery in. When you open it up, as you can see, everything is done. It is all wired. There's nothing to do, absolutely nothing. All you gotta do, is connect that to your positive, that to your negative, that's it. That's all you do. Also in your battery box comes with one of these, it's like a divider. That way your battery can't move around in the box. It secures your battery. I'm getting rid of this. So I take this out, I'm gonna make my own. So I discard this. You will need a battery, okay? Now I'm using a lithium battery you don't have to use a lithium battery. You can use an AGM battery. I wouldn't recommend you use lead acid because as it needs to be vented, you can't have it inside your vehicle. So either have an AGM or have a lithium battery. You are better off going a lithium battery because of the weight and especially if you're gonna carry it around and you want it to be portable because your AGM battery is gonna weigh over twice what this weighs. This weighs 13 kilos where your AGM about a 120, 130 AGM battery is gonna weigh at least 34 kilos. So bear in mind, that's the weight you'll be carrying around. Okay, now I'm using my trusty Red Arc DC charger. This was under the bonnet of my Pajero for about eight years, and it has not missed a beat. Now this is the old one, it doesn't have solar input. So if you want to carry around a solar blanket to charge while you're camped, they pretty much have dual input these days where when I purchased this, there was no such thing as the dual input. But this thing still works, and this thing here is not a lithium charger, but this battery will take any DC charger. It's got a special BMS in it that takes any type of DC charger, and it takes this charger no problem at all. The only thing on the DC charger, I put two Anderson connectors on it. That one is the input, that one is the output. So this comes from the vehicle start battery. You can buy these that have these pre-wired with Anderson plugs. So if you're not sure, get yourself one with pre-wired Anderson plugs. Otherwise, it's very simple to put these on. I have a video on fitting Anderson plugs. So in this case, the red wire is input, the brown wire is the output, and the black is earth. Pretty much on the blue is the ignition wire, but you connect that to the red. And that's it on this one, where if you had the solar input DC charger, it would have a yellow wire, and that's your solar input. Well, that's what Red Arc has anyway. First thing, get my battery, put it inside the box. Now I have a bit of a cavity here. This is the beauty of the bigger battery box. I'm gonna put my DC charger inside the box. You only see this cable, which I will need to run a lead to the start battery of the vehicle. And then to make this portable, all you do is disconnect this and just carry your battery box away. So this is out. I'm gonna make myself a piece of plywood to put in its place. That's my divider. 
that will hold the battery, stop the battery sliding across in the box. And that provides somewhere to screw my DC charger to. You can put your DC charger on the outside if you wish. I'm gonna put mine inside the box. Mount me DC charger to the board. There's the DC charger. Drop that in. So there's my input. That's from the start battery of the vehicle. I'll show you that bit later. So you just gotta connect this one to this battery. Right, you can either connect this to the battery directly if you like. Just make sure there's a fuse on it. This is only a 20 amp charger and I have, I've got a 30 amp fuse in here. I'm gonna connect it with the Anderson connector. Made myself a, a lead to connect to the battery with an Anderson connector on it. So what I do is I connect this. The output of the charger connects to the leads to the battery. So once I connect that, you see now, the DC charger is flashing. It's recognizing the battery already. So as soon as I connect this to a 12 volt input source, so you need to run a lead from the start battery up to the rear of your vehicle to plug into this. And that's all you need to do. And that will trigger, once you start your vehicle, this will start charging this battery. If you have a solar input, it's gonna have an extra connection. So for instance, I'd have one here. I'm gonna add this later. My Victron charge controller. I am gonna add this, but I'll, I'm not gonna do it in this video because it'll just confuse people. When this gets mounted in here, it's gonna go underneath this. It'll go down the bottom. That is my solar input. So let's say if you had a DC charger with a dual input, it had the solar input and the DC input. So that one goes to your car battery, and this one goes to your solar blanket, solar panel, portable solar panel, whatever solar panel you have, or if you have a solar panel on the roof of your vehicle, it connects to this. Simple as that, and that's all you do. So I'll take that away. So I'm just gonna keep it simple with this. I've gotta connect these two wires now to the battery terminal. So now she's all connected. The DC charger connected to the battery, and we have the battery box lid connected to the battery. Okay, we put the lid on. Okay, there she's all strapped down. There's the box all connected up. There's your on off switch. So as you see, there's no power. You turn that on and you can see your voltage. That's your voltage button, your circuit breaker. Okay, all there is to do now, go to the vehicle, connect this up to the start battery of the vehicle. It's a Mitsubishi ASX, it's 2020, so it is a very, very modern vehicle. So all I'm doing now is waiting for my cable to come, but I'm gonna give you an example here. So just imagine these are connected with battery terminals to your battery. That's all you do, guys. You connect your positive to your positive, your negative to your negative. Put a fuse in here, run your cable to the rear of your vehicle where you want your battery to go. Now there's the cable. Let's just imagine that's in the vehicle going up the rear. Your battery box is connected, all right? Let's just imagine we're in the boot of the vehicle. I'll show you now, I'll go start the vehicle and you'll see the DC charge will start charging. It'll probably go on float because the battery is charged. And there you go. The battery is only float charging because it is charged. And that's it guys, that's all you do. That's a nice simple dual battery system. And and really, to pick that up and carry it around, it's not that heavy. But like I said, go to lithium, don't go an AGM because they're just so heavy to lug around. So just to go back over it, we have the battery. We have the DC charger connected to the battery. We have the top connected to the battery. So there's the DC charger connected. So that's coming from the DC charger. 
and then that's going into the DC charger with the cable from the front. So like I said, positive, put a fuse in there. So in my case, I would stick a 30 amp fuse here. Okay, and that's it. As soon as you start your vehicle, that will start charging. That's all you need guys, that's pretty much, I wish I did that when I first put a dual battery system in a vehicle. That's what I wish I did. But anyway, each their own, everyone has their own uses, everyone has their own situations. Now the good thing about this, if you do ever sell your vehicle, you simply disconnect your battery. This is the cable in your vehicle. Just leave that in your vehicle. That remains in your vehicle and that's it. The new owner drives away, you have this, you get your new vehicle, put your new cable in, that's it. Here's the cable installed. There's the fuse holder for the DC charger in the rear. Okay, so just connect to the positive, which is that one. Put your fuse. And there's a negative connection right there. And that's the cable. That okay, goes right down the back of the vehicle. Okay, it goes underneath. Pretty much pulled all this out. Got it up on the floor. There's the cable there. And in the back you see the fridge. Plugged into the battery box. See the fridge there. And that runs all the time. It's on now. So there's my solar connection for the battery box. So if we go somewhere and we've got a portable solar blanket, we can just plug it in. Because I put the um, solar controller inside this box. I added another Anderson connector on the battery box. This goes from the solar controller. So this is the load out. I can see on my phone, on the Bluetooth, on what power's coming out of the battery. But yeah, these battery boxes are fine. You wanna run a fridge, charge your phone, anything like duty, these are perfect. Really good. Okay, once you set your battery up, get yourself one of these CAN inverters. Now this one, this one's a Waco, perfect power. This is 150 watts. Now this will charge your laptop, charge your power tool battery. So I've got my Ryobi charger here. You can charge your drone batteries, your GoPro batteries, any camera equipment batteries you can charge. Simply by one of these. Get Simply plug it in to the cigarette outlet in your battery box. There you go, there's the light, she's come on. Okay, I'll plug my MacBook Pro in. MacBook Pro's plugged in. It's charging away. And you can see there's the charge for the battery on the MacBook Pro. A little bit of fan in the inverter there, it just makes a noise. I'll unplug the MacBook Pro. I'll plug in the Ryobi battery charger. She's plugged in. And then she's charging away. There's the fan. And there you have it. That's all you need, guys. That's that's it's simple so as that. Only wide for 30 amps. So if you're looking for something heavier you might want to consider building your own. All right, I hope this helps somebody out, this video. If you guys are new to it, um, you want to consider this, really. It might be the thing for you. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this video has helped somebody out. Till next time, bye.